Are you a local business with a small budget but are trying to be profitable on Google Ads and just don't really know how or have a good game plan for that? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what to do if you have a small budget on Google Ads. It's not too difficult, but there are certain steps you can take to be much more successful inside Google Ads. And a lot of these things, they don't take too much time. However, they are going to deliver you big results, make your life much more easier and make your Google Ads so much more successful. This video is going to be divided up into two parts. The first part, I'm going to go into detail on several ways to optimize an account with a small budget. And then the second part is I'm going to give you two different types of campaigns that you might want to consider running if you have a small budget. I find that these campaigns work very well with small businesses, especially if you have a small budget and don't have all that much time on your hands to actually optimize these accounts. I think these are probably the best campaign setups for you. Now on with the video. The first way to optimize your account if you have a small budget is to go into your search terms report and get Get rid of the keywords you don't want to be targeting. The best way to waste money in Google Ads is to go into Google Ads, let it just run continuously on broad match, and Google is, is going to spend a whole bunch of your money just guessing on terms that it thinks it may get a customer on. And really, the best way to avoid this is to go into your search term reports and add negative. So this doesn't take too much time, but if your account is brand new, I would recommend doing this every 48 to 72 hours. This is a great way to just get rid of all the garbage keywords you don't want to bid on and waste money on. And really, this is a way that cleans up your account, make sure you're only bidding on top notch high buying intent keywords that you actually want to pay money for your advertisement to show on. By the way, adding negatives in your search term report, this is in our actual Google Ads optimization checklist, it's completely free, it walks you through what you should be doing on a weekly, monthly and three month basis to optimize your account for best results. And I really think it is worth getting if you don't have any checklists whatsoever. Pilots use checklists, I think you probably should too, if you're in a Google Ads account, just to make sure you don't forget anything. It's super easy easy to use. You can also jot down all your results as well. And I think it's worth getting from most people in Google ads. The second way to really help with a small budget is not running multiple campaigns. Pick one campaign and get good at it. Make sure it's profitable. Then you can expand the account. What I see a lot of Google Ads users doing is they get caught up in the idea that bigger is better. They'll have multiple campaigns, display campaigns, YouTube video campaigns, search campaigns. All these campaigns are not profitable. If you're not profitable, bigger is not better. Bigger is going to waste you a lot of money. So pick one campaign, stick with it, make sure it's profitable, then scale. This is going to save you so much money in the long run. The third optimization tactic I would use for a small budget is using all of your headlines and descriptions and extensions. What a lot of people don't realize is click through rate is one of the big three factors in determining whether or not your account is going to be successful long term. And click through rate really determines quality score or a big factor of quality score. And what this does is really impacts how much you're going to pay per click. I'll put a graph up that shows you click through rate related to cost per click. As you can see, the higher the click through rate, the lower the cost per click. Well, how do you get higher click through rates? Because everyone wants a high click through rate. And the way you do that is by giving Google a whole bunch of headlines and descriptions and extensions to test. The more information we can give Google, the more ability it's, it's going to have to actually A-B test all of these headlines, and the more likely it is to find a good keyword. This is why we created the done for you bundle, because people are too lazy to actually type out and write all of the actual headlines. We even have a free video on how to write headlines that sell. That's a great video. I'll link it up above. But having 15 out of 15 headlines and having three ads in every single ad group and having all of your extensions filled out. This is going to boost your click through rate up substantially and it's going to reduce your cost substantially if you're able to get a high quality score, which is likely if you have a high click through rate. So please make sure fill out all of your ads, 15 out of 15 headlines, four to four descriptions and use all the relevant extensions. By the way, a quick note on extensions, don't use irrelevant extensions. If you have a business that for the most part, people don't go to, I wouldn't recommend using the location extension. I think that's a waste of money just because it one, it's very hard to actually track sales with location extensions. And two, if the sale really doesn't matter whether or not they come to your physical business, then I would much rather a phone call or an email lead over someone clicking the location button, which is still going to cost you money anyways. Now, the fourth way to optimize your account for a small budget is turning off the display and search partners network. Now, I hate the display network, as I've mentioned in many, many, many videos. Uh, it's just not something that I really like. 
if you want to run your own display campaign, that's absolutely fine. But if you're using a normal search campaign, like a lot of people, the display network is just going to be a waste of money. It's very difficult to actually track and optimize inside of a search campaign. Again, if you want to create a display campaign separately, absolutely, by all means do that. But inside of a search campaign, it's a complete waste of money. Turn it off. You're going to lose money on this. The search partner network, it can absolutely be valuable if you want to expand this and you're having issues with search volume. But right off the bat, we don't need any more search volume. We need results. We need to be profitable and really use our money where it's best spent. And that's going to generally be in the Google network, which is through Google when someone types into Google. That's where we want our ad to pop up. We don't care right now whether or not it's on some other display network or search partner network. We want results on the general Google search network. So that's what we're aiming for. And that's generally our best bet when going forward and making sure this account is going to be profitable in the long run. So I would really recommend turning off the display network and the actual search partners network. The fifth way to optimize your account is by running on certain dates. Normally we recommend running Mondays to Fridays, and that's a great bet for most service-based businesses. Generally costs are lower Monday to Friday as compared to weekends. It's not always the case, but more often than not it is. So we would recommend running Mondays to Fridays. That way you can save a little bit of money and you're not gonna have those higher costs per lead. Also, generally on weekends, people have a lot more time on their hands and they're going to call around a lot more. We find that you're going to be more unsuccessful in actually closing the sale on the weekend as compared to Monday and Friday where people don't have as much time on their hands. Another thing I would mention about ad scheduling is the actual hours you're going to run. I would recommend running ads only when you can effectively respond to them. So within half an hour, you really want to get back to these leads. If it's a phone call, you want to immediately pick up. The closing rates go up substantially if you can actually pick up the phone or respond to an email very quickly. So that's something very important. A lot of businesses, they just run 24 seven Google ads. That's not something you want to do. You're going to waste a lot of money and you're going to have a lot of uh, customers that just leave because they're impatient. And as we all know, we're very impatient nowadays. So that's something to keep in mind. I again, only run ads when you can effectively respond to them. The sixth thing we can do to optimize our account with a small budget is to turn off losing keywords. This is pretty easy. And we actually created a report that does this for you. It highlights everything uh, in your account that goes above where our cost per lead wants to be and below it. And if you want to keep those keywords that may be a little bit above, it actually gives you ways to solve that. Maybe it's a low click through rate. Maybe it's a low conversion rate, whatever it is, it highlights all that stuff for you. That's why we actually created that. By the way, the, I'll put the link down for the problem solver down below. A lot of people have been asking about it. That being said, if you want to just go into your Google ads account, look through the actual keywords, sort by clicks. This is a great way to determine if a keyword is winning, if it's losing. And this normally goes for phrase or exact match keywords. Broad match is a little bit more different. You got to give it a little bit more room to run. Uh, but phrase and exact match, you can generally give 10 clicks. Once it's over 10 clicks, you can make a decision on whether or not this keyword is going to be profitable. You know your cost per lead, what you can afford. If it's above that after 10 clicks, you can turn it off. If it's below that, you keep it on, you keep it running. But these keywords that are costing you way too much money, you got to get rid of them very quickly, especially if you have a small budget. So it's very important that you go in and pause the losing keywords or else you will lose a lot of money. The seventh way to optimize your account if you have a small budget is to take full advantage of Google's AI. We recommend once you have 30 conversions inside your account, switching over to an automated bid strategy because Google's AI is really, really good. The only issue with it is that it needs enough data to make accurate decisions. If it doesn't have that accurate data, generally it doesn't perform that well. It's slow and it's expensive. So we recommend starting off in maximize clicks, getting a whole bunch of data, waiting for 30 conversions to occur, and then switching over to target CPA, maybe giving it five to $10 on whatever Google recommends, and it will recommend a number. And then going from there, generally, you're going to see the best results once you can use Google's AI. It's very, very good. But again, it needs that data. But once you have 30 conversions, I would definitely recommend switching over to Google's AI. It is a fantastic resource and will bring your cost down substantially. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to recommend two campaigns so you can start off your account brand new or you can switch it up if you already have an account. Uh, honestly, Google ads can be run in a lot of ways. These are my two personal favorite campaigns. I think they're very easy. I think they produce very good results. And for most people, they're simple enough. If you're talking about YouTube campaigns, display campaigns, these things get a lot more complicated. You need a lot more A-B testing. And if you're not good with uh, numbers, they're going to burn a lot of money very quickly. That's why I like these two campaigns over the other ones. Not to say you can't use other campaigns. I'm just saying these 
tend to have better results with small businesses. Now the first campaign, and I say this time and time again, is a call only campaign. I love this campaign. It's super simple to set up. Most business owners can set it up themselves, even if they're not tech savvy. We have a complete tutorial on how to set this up from start to finish. We also have a course on this because we have done call only ads for a very long time now. If you need more data than that actual tutorial, by all means, check out the course as well. Uh, but this is a fantastic campaign to get leads rolling into your business. They bring in phone calls only, so you don't got to worry about responding to emails. Sometimes they are more expensive than a normal search campaign or display campaign. And I understand why, because you're getting phone calls right off the bat. Google recognizes that as well. So they're going to generally ramp up the price. But that being said, these are a fantastic resource to bring in high quality leads very quickly into your business. And I really, really like this campaign. The second type of campaign is a search campaign. We have a complete tutorial on this campaign on our channel as well. If you want to check that out completely free, start to finish, uh, just like the previous tutorial, uh, a great campaign as well. The only issue with it is you need to set up conversion tracking. You need to have a landing page. You don't need a landing page, but it's worth getting a landing page. So please get a landing page. If you use this campaign, you're going to save yourself and make yourself a lot of money. That being said, you have to make sure conversion tracking is set up properly. You have to make sure all of your headlines are filled out. There's a lot more headlines, descriptions, extensions with a normal search campaign. There's a lot more stuff to optimize. So these aren't my general go to campaigns. But if you are well versed in Google ads, this is a great way to run Google ads profitably long term. These are generally less expensive than call only ads. However, they require a lot more work as compared to call only ads. So that's the trade off there. Now I do have one big favor to ask, and that is for you to leave a like, I put so much time and effort into these videos and I absolutely love doing them. And you guys are absolutely awesome. In the comments section, you guys are actually leaving testimonials now on which boggles my mind. So, uh, thank you in advance. If you do choose to like this video, I really do appreciate it. And it helps the channel grow. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave a comment down below. I get back to just about everyone. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.